Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another RGL cast. My name is Jarrett, and I'm here with Space Ghost to bring you the Jug Dealers versus Platypug Esports. How you doing, Space Ghost? I'm doing pretty good. It uh, should be a good match tonight. Uh, you know, we're on good old CP process here. Seeing two, you know, two, of, two of the newer teams in invite, so it should be interesting to see uh, you know, which one can come out on top here. Yeah, both these teams actually had to go through the qualifier preseason to try to, uh, you know, solidify their spot, and, and both made it, but uh, it was funny, I was going to note how the importance and how this was going to be a bit of a rematch, because tonight we're on Process, and Process was actually one of the maps that they played when they went through the qualifiers, although you can kind of just throw a little bit to the wayside, because the, uh, the Platypug Esports roster was definitely not the same. I'm pretty sure half of their players have been swapped out since then, because you know, the teams are still kind of in their team building phase and nothing was completely solidified. But uh, speaking of rosters, it's probably important to go over the rosters so everyone can kind of know what's up. The Jug, the, the jug Dealer has been casted a couple times, so you might recognize some of these names by now. But uh, Platypuk Esports, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we're casting them, although they have some pretty familiar names themselves as well. Some new ones will go over their roster right now. It is Alec and Aimer on Scout, Tojo and Manicu on Soldier, Hunter 2.0 on Demo and Endust on Medic. And for the Jug Dealers, we have a ringer, actually. We have Tresh, a.k.a. Penguin Master, on scout. But the rest of the roster is familiar. We have Gungan, also on scout. Haze and Paul Dog on soldier. Mustard Overlord on demo. And Phantom on medic. Yep, Zam going to be missing from that Jug Dealers roster. We saw him yesterday, I think it was. Time goes by yeah, so quickly, it does. He's <laughs> literally yesterday playing uh, GCI, but not here tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and use a ringer to try to close this out. This, this match... It's maybe not necessarily as important as other matches in comparison, but it's still an important one for the teams nonetheless, because if both teams are trying to you know, reach their goals by the end of the season, uh, you're definitely wanna go going to want to collect a win here. The Joe Dealer's probably trying to keep themselves alive in their playoff race, even though it's a little bit tough, but this match is definitely going to be one that they want to win if they don't want to ha have things be even har harder and maybe even impossible later on down the road. And for the side of... Uh, Platypug Esports, it's hard to say exactly what their goal is right now, because I feel like they still have a lot of, like, week two matches that are lingering. Like, I think last time I checked their page, there's still a couple teams that they could have played by now, but they got rescheduled or something, so it, it's it's not often that you'll see results of them versus a lot of their neighboring teams, so it's it's kind of a mystery on how well they're going to do, not only because of that, but it's the first time we're kind of casting them as well, so big question mark on how the, well they're going to be able to perform so it might be a little bit of a surprise for the jug dealers if they want to keep this train rolling and keep themselves in their their relatively you know fifth ish place spot that they're in right now but go ahead and throw out your predictions right now on what you think is going to happen uh i would say the jug dealers are maybe the favorites but because we just kind of went over that platypug esports hasn't really played all the teams quite yet you never really know what's going to happen there's a lot of experienced players on both teams and newcomers alike when it comes to a uh, you know, veterans that have been an invite for years, as well as some newcomers who are getting into their first season of advance. But uh, Space Ghost, what are you what are you looking at here? Who are, who are your players to watch, and what do you think the the score is going to be at the end of the day? Uh, not really sure what the score is going to be, but I think there's definitely a lot of players to note. I think one thing to point out is players who um, you know, people watching may not have you know know exactly all the history of T2. We'll say that even though the Platy Pug team is you know a quote unquote new team at invite, they do have a lot of old blood, so to speak. You know. Alec, Tojo, and Dust, all, you know, very pretty established invite veterans from the, you know, the good old ESEA days. So definitely they have a, you know, they're, they're not to be slept on here. They do have the experience and the DM factor to definitely come out on top here. Especially on Alec and Indust, who are by far the, the most experienced, not, and especially followed by Tojo as well. I think we're still waiting on him joining the server, but uh, Alec had, has many uh, finishes with, you know, TSU Street Hoops type teams and and us the the classic practice persistent perfection opened it into Violet Legend all the way back from ESC 18. So definitely a lot of experience on both teams. So it's kind of both teams are kind of a melting pot. They got players that have been in invite for well over a year and some even beyond that, as well as both teams kind of you know got a little bit of new blood. They're still in their first year of invite. So uh, it's gonna be interesting when it comes to predictions. I think it's. I think it's kind of hard to say exactly how close or not close it's going to be. I really wish I could have used that, that qualifier match as like some, some sort of gauge to figure out what was going to happen. I guess for the record, it was a 3-2 in 30 minutes for the Jug Dealers, that qualifier match. But like I said, three, three players on Platypugs Esports are, are different from then, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So. Yeah, hard, definitely hard to gauge. 
I will say there's also um <laughs> yeah, you know, now that I think about much remember that also we have some of the oldest TFT players who are currently actively playing in this match right now. Like I'd say in Dust and Muster Overlord are definitely up there. So is Alec. I yep, just, and just Paul Dog too. Yeah, Paul Dog too. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. I guess another thing to point out, I did mention it that uh that Doug Dealers do have a ringer. I'm tr curious to see how Tresh kind of slots in on Flank Skip, how he compares to, you know, normally they have Zam, who I'd say is a pretty, you know, high impact, you know, high risk, high reward kind of player. He definitely has a uh, large impact. So I'm curious to see how Tresh can, uh, you know, adapt and play on process, especially because it's such a scat centric map, too. Yeah, I think both teams have a have a giant question mark in terms of uh, they have a player where it's like, oh, I wonder how well they're going to do. And like you said, Tresh is probably the, the person for the drug dealers because, you know, he is the ringer. Most of the time, ringers, it, it, it can be difficult to kind of get into the groove and uh, fill in with what your team needs, especially if it's short notice. You might not have been necessarily prepared to play a match. So sometimes it, it all works out and it's totally great. But other times it's a bit of a struggle the first little bit of playing until, you know, you, you find yourself a groove. And I'd say for the side of uh, Platypugs Esports, there's somewhat of a similar trend, maybe not necessarily a ringer per se, but in terms of a, a question marks like, oh, I wonder how well they're going to do, you know. We have a lot of experienced players on their team. And even the newcomers into Invite, Aimer, he got third last season. Hunter got fourth and fourth before that and second a year ago. But Mancute, I think he, he's he been out of the league for maybe like a year or so. And even though he's a move up, it's a main move up as well. It's not just an advance. So it's, a, it's quite the jump when it comes to league play. So uh, it makes you wonder, is he going to be, you know, standard performance? Or is he going to be a star player? Or what's going to you know what's going to happen with that with his uh performance so definitely have some players to watch in that department to try to figure out how how they're going to kind of fit in with their team what their role is going to be yeah it's always curious to see there there's a couple of players that i can't think of any at the top of my head but there's definitely been some players that have made you know big jumps in divisions you know kind of kind of skipped a couple divisions on the way some people you know open to invite in the good old ESEA days it's definitely happened before so it's nice to see you know yeah. some players you know get in the big boost yeah I we've guess, seen plenty yeah. of recent players like on current playoff teams where it only takes like a season or two for them to get into playoffs and yeah I, i'm curious to see how this match will go i think you know I, i'd consider the drug dealers the favorites to win obviously but i think this definitely could go either way I'm, it should be interesting to see who how this match goes i don't know whether it's going to be fast or it's going to be stale maybe you know, it's yeah. it's process it really can go either way probably depends on the pace at which the teams are trying to play honestly i mean every team probably has a little bit of a preference and you might just kind of like deal with whatever the other team is throwing at you, but uh, yeah, not really sure because both teams kind of take into account like both teams play a factor into the speed of the match. And since we haven't really seen a whole lot of Platypug esports, it's kind of a giant question mark, even though we've seen I'm pretty sure we've casted like three matches of the Jug Dealers so far this season, so we kind of have an idea of how they want to play, but it might not necessarily be the easiest thing to happen depending on if uh. Platypugs Esports has anything to say about it. Although we are going live, so don't have to wait too much longer till we see what's going to happen at the pace of the matches and, and all that kind of stuff, so... Should yeah, be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna be watching Muster Overlord on the roll out here. See, see if you can hit the, you know, the good old process roll. It definitely can beef that ramp, uh, ramp jump sometimes. He does actually hit it. Shout out to Muster. Okay. So, arriving on mid here, both soldiers, both soldiers actually doing the fast roll out. He's not gonna take the pack here. Almost getting a little caught out, but, uh... Platypug's kind of opting to take this a little slow, and Mustard's just going to head straight into them. Oh, big damage off from Manicure, and look at this collapse. And Phantom Falls as well, that's the blue medic down for their team, so it's going to be difficult for them to continue in this fight. Trying to get anything scrappy going as Indus is all the way back in choke, a little bit difficult for them to get too much. Paul Dog thrown in, or that's Haze rather, collecting a kill, so demo kill collected for Ooh, their the side, but still no beam. A nice air shot from Tojo onto Haze, but oh, trash? He's able to collect that He's kill. in the 1v2, can, can, can he hit it? Oh, sadly can't. Alec is, you know, too disciplined to allow anything tragic to happen. So it looks like, uh, the Platypug Esports here are gonna take the first mid. I'm curious yeah, they, to see, yeah. They had good counter-initiation there for that mid. They saw the the plan was gonna be, okay, let's move across our own pack, and then immediately stuffed it. Mustard just bashed up against the wall, immediately dead, and cleaned up Phantom right after. So, Indus in a pretty good position, still has full Uber charge to be able to work into the next point. Have to slow down a bit, Paul Dog. Pre-fire bump Paul Dog, so low. Actually gonna end up cratering there, so that might be a, that might be the pick they need for Platypug Esports to just walk into, walk into second here with their full Uber head, or I guess 50%, not full. Oh, the but. spam though. Despite that soldier being dead, Indus taking a lot of damage. I think he just ate a pipe across the map or something, but 
slows him down a little bit, a little bit of bot time, and it's actually, that's enough to kind of even things out for the most part. Like, realistically, it's yeah. evened out here. They could maybe still try, like, or I could would I be surprised they if know. they still try, but they really should I think they know. Shouldn't. I think they're going to exchange. I don't, yeah, this is a definitely risky. I, I think they've realized now that they've taken too long. I do see a sniper dot in lobby, so, and they have an engineer, so, uh, Junk Duo is already fully set up with their uh, off classes on last. Yep, got the gun, and it seems like the sniper is swapped off, so trying to wait until we see what red team is doing before we go that route. But lobby being taken by the red team, trying to spot how the blue team is holding. It's actually going to be some initiation by Tojo, trying to create space. Two man is going to be the play, able to get the gun, but not quite more than that. Alk will give up his life. Tojo will go ahead and back up and survive for now. So one sack in exchange for the gun, and Paul Dog looks like he might be on the move through two, trying to bomb in, getting onto the point. But immediately, stuff gets rest. a lot. Of, gets a lot of damage. Actually, Aimer going to fall off the. He got launched up by a direct. Oh, okay. it was, yeah, it was, uh, he double jumped. There was just nothing he could do. And Hayes got actually going and get Mana Cube. And gonna get attacked too, just barely living. So now they have a distraction to try to just walk in a second here. Yeah, Gungan's trying to make some space, and here comes Mustard to follow. Oh, the collapse of Mustard and Phantom are just caught out, and they're gonna have to use early. And uh, Din Dust does not, finally, finally does pop here, but this Red Ruber is gonna last a very long time. It's just a scout solo. Oh, and Hayes dies over on the side. He was behind the entire time, trying to flood through one. Scout upper in Nest, trying to make some space, allowing their team to get through one. Is taking a lot of damage from Paul Dog, who will eventually fall. And it seems like Alina is working in the side really of Clanabug's favor. Oh, he barely binds up, but they're getting on the point, trying to get some spam on that. And Mustard able to collect two. The cleanup is happening. Only three, two players left alive for the side of the red team, and with them both falling. That is going to be successful hold from the jug dealers, making sure their round is intact, working their way on to what should be a free two. Yeah, that, that last push was so close. I saw, I think it was Indust actually hitting like an across the map bow on Phantom to drop him really low, but he did manage to hit that bind just in time. So, uh, Jug Dealer is going to be pushing into mid here foot with a, you know, pretty sizable Uber Red. And it looks like Red is just going to opt to, you know, give this up. Alex actually oh, get it. <laughs> oh, did he get the ornament? He got ornamented. <laughs> oh, that's an absolute tragedy. It, it, it happens. Yeah, I, <laughs> some reading in the chat, but. That's pretty good. It looks like Jug Dealers are going to just, you know, cap, cap two, pretty much solo cap mid. And now they're going to just get it mid. And here comes the Muster Overlord bomb, but he uh, fell. He's going to get bombed by Toto. Actually, Toto, but jumping fan oh, Phantom was force. left alone. Yeah, everyone just kind of left him, and he was just sitting there all alone and sad. And looks like that's going to be a free force for Red. So now they have Uber at to push out a last and very sizable at that team. Manic, you going to be caught out here, but, you know. He jumped back in. I, I think he got caught. Whatever happened, it's a consolation prize. They do still have, you know. There's a large end to work with, but they're down to, so Joke Dealers might want to take advantage of the lack of players to walk in. Yep, got a sniper up in the spawn. Paul Dog trying to create some space to get that sniper back inside so they can't really see too much. Trying to get on the point, getting some sort of sack going, able to collect the demo pick, getting oh, into very low 13 HP, does not want to pop. He's, so he's literally hurt. He doesn't four. have a baby bind. He's literally four and he's at okay. He I'm yeah, he doesn't have a bind. That's a... Uh, you know, sometimes the old I, I hadn't had like the longest time, and I've had so many people yell at me for it, so I'm amazed. Either that or it didn't work. I don't know, one of the two, but uh, it looks like Red is going to take come in with the Uber. Red. Indus doing a very good job baiting and making sure he stays alive, keeps his Uber. Here comes a big bomb from Paul Dog, though, onto the point. Looks like he is going to preserve his life, too. Blue's holding this very close, and Manicute is down. The demo is just in the thick of it. Their Uber will come out, will get dropped. Seems like a bit of a misplay there, but Mustard will fall as well. So no dem for either side, but it seems like the cap will go off in favor of the red team. But Trash behind, able to collect Inda, so that's a medic dead. Two left alive, Toto is going to get shot down, and Aimer is the last one. Shh, nice shot from Paul Dog. Popping up in the air, able to collect that kill with Manicute the Soul. Actually, not even Survivor, he's just a respawner. The lone person defending last hunter will spawn. There's no sneaky spot on the point. Just yet, oh, he does spawn. spawn in time. He's gonna get sneaky on the point here. This might be a you know, kind of a miracle defense. We'll have to see. Nah, not gonna be able to get it in time, unfortunately. Almost. Seems like a little bit of a misplay out onto two, trying to work out. That, I mean, even if they had, it wasn't even ad. They were trying to work off ad, but it dwindled to like 10%, which. Kind of makes sense with yeah, the they able both, to... But uh, Jug Dealers just decided to, you know, kind of stay in and kind of kind of realize that the other team, you know, they really weren't looking to fight. They are just trying to get the point for free and Jug Dealers kind of punished the greed. Yeah. But new mid, things refresh. Jug Dealers taking that first round, but uh, Platypug's eSports are still in this, trying to get a round in their favor. Maybe it can work out from the mid. Soldiers trying to jump over to their own side, getting shot a little bit because blue team controls the high ground, at least for now. Hunter dropping very low, actually. Paul Dog going off Those the damage. Indus, Indus inside the spawn, which leave Hunter by himself. Paul Dog will fall, though. Hunter dropped to 30 HP, needs an arrow inside the sewer. Scout's running forward towards eight. One gonna fall, although probably collecting haze as well. So three, four scenario in favor of the red team. Manicute jumping in on the demo, trying to clean up by the side of 
Revenant, who will get that kill. Desperately trying to get out. They're shooting him down, but dro only dropped about 40 HP before he's able to get out. And so far, it's a 3v3. Maybe they can poke around and keep though. trying. They do have small Uber. I don't know if they know if they have the head or not, but looks like they are going to try to fight this anyway. And Indus does not have Uber yet. Yep, Hunter will fall, not in the quite the best position to be able to survive that. Probably did not expect a slight Uber ad scenario there, so with no demo, that's going to be pretty much it until they actually want to use the Uber, and it looks like it's happening soon. They don't want to actually give up this mid, and they know that they, this ad is still a decent thing to work off. Trying to Fresh is right behind, the though. Oh, Alec going to fall. <laughs> Indus going to get forced. So many players dropping from the side of the red team as well as getting their uber force. Seems like the execution is just a little bit too sloppy. There's actually two players behind from the side of the blue team and Tret just two-shotting Aimer around the corner. Another kill collected for the side of the jug dealers. Tresh is kind of just running rampant behind, just running around the flank, taking all these DM fights and winning all of them. You know, Tresh kind of a note for being a pretty good DM player, and he's really showing it off here. It looks like we have the, I think that was a Roamer trade, or we had a, we had a silly soldier trade in 19. It looks like we're gonna, another 1v1, but Alec is going to take that. So no soldiers for the side of a uh, jug dealer. So I think they might try to push mid here. Hunter's just walking through, it looks like it. Yeah, they do have an ad to work off of as they oh, delay man, long <laughs> enough. They shouldn't. That shouldn't take too much longer until they're able to get it but i think the red team recognize they don't necessarily want to work themselves into a bad situation so it's going to set up their defense use their players to try to force the jugglers on the way in and on their way in they There's are a big mustard, mustard bomb he's, he's the so deep. able to get aimer indus is safe inside the shutter though hunter kind of caught out gonna get an arrow from indus barely two arrows from indus and barely live gungan will be able to chase down it's a little bit of damage but nothing quite just behind that. he's gonna go now I, I, it looks like they do know he's there but that might be the distraction red needs to get in looks like they're gonna pop in they, they didn't even cap two yet Trying to collect as many kills as they can. Hayes is somewhat behind now he's in going lobby. To last. He's trying to drag people back, probably. He's in lobby here. Looks like they do know he's on the back cap. Two scouts there. Not going to work out, unfortunately. But, but that means no scouts on two right yeah. now. So that injustice is just dead. Gungan just going into the enemy team, collecting so many kills. Phantom just flying through the air, surfing Lit. a nice rocket. But oh, barely at the last second. The scouts on the cleanup, trying to collect these last frags. But Tresh is just still keeping the train rolling, collecting as many kills as he possibly can. So 2v2 <laughs> scenario and a shot from Mustard keeping himself alive. They have a chase coming from Hayes, trying to find the soldier that got owned a little bit earlier, but not able to find him. We'll back up into sewer to preserve his life. So a big scuffle on two and many bodies falling, but so far still owned by the side of the red team. These are some of the scrappiest fights I've seen in a while. It makes for pretty entertaining at the very bare minimum. Because, And I'm looking at the points here and I can definitely see that uh, the scouts are having a field day right now, whereas the projectile class is not so much, but we do see the Tresh sniper here Possibly, uh, curious if he's gonna take an aggressive peek here, because Ubers are kind of even. I don't know. I don't know if a red team necessarily expects a sniper at this point in time. You're just trying to get someone who's standing on the fence or someone who like peeks choke. Sometimes demos get impatient and peek choke and try to get aggressive spam. So maybe he's banking on that. Yeah, process choke is one of those points. So you can. There's a lot of different ways you can peek it and kind of catch people out. So I'm curious to see if people do manicure. Oh, he's going okay. for the fence now. Oh, yeah. it takes a shot. I think they yeah, might have seen. They should have heard it. At a bare minimum, they should have heard it. Looks like, uh, yeah, they're gonna opt to go sewer here. Hopefully, Red expects this and uh, has they're prepared for it because he gets the free shot off on sewer. It might not end well for Indust or somebody else. Yep, yeah, can't let the blue team take shots forever. Otherwise, someone on your team will eventually fall. Another shot taken, and they're on the move, working towards the sewer doors, trying to apply some spam. But definitely want to have something concrete going for your team. Shot from choke from the side of trash. Hunter approaching him, pipe, able to get a nice pipe. The trash. That's gonna get him hurt a little. Easy roller too. Dropped a 17 HP. Tojo trying to bomb and get the last piece of spam, but oh, sniper's he's already so out and there. He's and actually, crater, actually. To, yeah, dying to fall damage. So it he's wasn't the pick they team. expected, but yeah. Oh, oh Hayes. But hey, Hayes is in on Indus, and he does get Alec actually. So now they're down both uh, soldier and a scout. So this is looking at it. Is that Manicute gonna probably yeah fall, gonna fall soon? So it looks like they're just gonna have to back up here. The sniper. I don't think the sniper even got a kill, but just his presence kind of discombobulated the red team enough so that they could be able to walk in. Tried to execute something good for their team to prevent the sniper from doing anything, but the execution just was just sloppy enough Trish, to uh, do some he new gets people. The first 50. Not able to get it. Uh, going for the hero play. I guess he's done playing sniper, at least for now. Might not come up on something else, or who knows, maybe he just saw an opening and wanted to run in and is fine spawning sniper again. We'll see in a couple seconds here what they want to do to try to break in the last. Seems like cookie cutter is going to be the way to go. Although there is an NG on the side of the field as well as a sniper who's sitting in five might see someone's feet if you're not too careful depending on how you're going to approach. Working your way into lobby, which is 
pretty much standard for trying to break glass. So, Solder Bombing in haste, trying to create some states, getting some damage onto Tojo. Will back up, trying to get an arrow. 30 HP will receive it to continue his plight onto the, the, the three door, trying to spam down anyone in lobby. Page bombing in, trying to get onto the demo landing anywhere he can, but it's actually a lot of damage and Indus dropped to 14 HP. Ball going out, but the ornament will miss. God, if that ornament hit Indus, that would have been tragic for the red team. <laughs> yeah, that would have been extremely tragic. I must say, it's, it's enough, rare enough to see an ornament kill, but the ornament drop is just, you know, an absolute travesty. Really, everyone except for the scout hates to see it, but... Tojo air shot on the Mustard, but Mustard has enough HP to survive it. Looks like Panicky a gun, falling as well, so... Yeah, gun can drop in very low, but it does look like a uh, blue team's gonna go into lobby here, see if they're gonna just spam out this gun and possibly just walk in. Just yeah, Mustard just around the corner. There's no spam for the for the red team. Both soldiers at it. Just Hunter that's alive. Uber change will come out. Soldiers will respawn. Aimer coming up on heavy for the post. Blue team surrounding themselves by five. The Hunter. The Hunter very aggressive. So actually deep. able to get Mustard and surfs the spam backwards. The rest of the He's team still trying alive. to initiate on him, but he's still alive for now. And three dropping for the side of the jug dealer. So initiation was not quite what it needed to be using the pick advantage to get the Uber change in your favor. So good position for Platypug Esports to use a three player advantage to work themselves into what seems to be a free second and who knows what's going to happen in uh, this upcoming battle between mid and two. Yeah, it looks like a, I, I saw the heavy and I knew that they already won the last fight, but Hunter just walked in, kind of chatted in and got a bunch of kills, but it looks like they're going to, yeah, it looks they're like trying. okay, going to try to sack in, but not going to work. Hayes also doing a big bomb, but might get caught up. We'll have to see. Dropping very low, but uh, yeah, there's also a fight happening IT. I didn't even notice, but it looks like, okay, they're just going to trade players. So red is down two, but they're only really functionally down one. So it's still holdable. Yep. No soldiers though, so no spam. So blue team might have a clean entry and an opportunity to see if they can get anything good going for the team. Working the way in the grass, trying to spam upward at these players that are on top of the point. And Aimer actually taking a very fat five bomb from Hayes, getting on it and us able to get that force out of the way, and that's a successful force for the side of the jug dealers trying to leave Stewart to make sure they don't have to use by themselves. Ooh, and Aimer actually trap. chasing a little bit too deep will drop to that trap. So. Now, not only do they have uh, the Uber intact, but their players are equalized on the field, as that's going to prompt them to be on the move through Al Qaeda to work their way into two. Yeah, they just looks like they're just going to steamroll this. It's going to be a tough order for Red to force. It looks like they're going to opt to just spam for now. Both soldiers just, you know, taking good spamming positions, but it looks like Blue might just get it for free. Oh, here's a big bomb coming in, but sadly, only, I think, a 40 damage rocket off on Phantom, so he's going to preserve his Uber, and uh, Blue's going to have, you know, 50, 40% Uber at for last. I'm trying to work their way into lobby to, you know, poke around and see what's up. Working their way through three, Pop will come out, and Paul Dog actually dying to the sniper, so one player immediately down on entry, trying to collect any kill they can. Manicu gonna die over by the two area. Sticky's getting moved up a point by the soldier spamming it. Gunnigan trying to get some space and cap time. Ooh, Alec, shot, another, another shot from Alec. Two kills so far in this defense, one onto a soldier, one onto a scout, but both soldiers are dead for the side of the red team. Bombing in the end of uh, Indus Cooper. Get the will force, come to Blake, trying to kills? chase down Mustard. 15 HP, 5 HP, will eventually die to the Alec pistol, working their way in to two, oh, Alec's trying to chase any two. kills oh, they're they can. not in fast enough. Oh, unfortunately, I think they all wanted to push out. Alec is just a little now, too fast. Now, but... just in. It's a little bit lopsided of this push, able to collect a haze kill at the at the very end of it, but Manicu to chase down as well. No scouts from the side of the red team, so 4v4 in position for the blue team to try to create some chaos. Hunter gonna fall, scout inside last, Gunkin trying to create space for his team to allow Tresh to also approach the point, putting him some damage. Both the soldiers respawns coming in for red team. Alec on the chase, trying to collect any kills oh, he can. Dog. Tresh will fall, fall dog. Probably so falling hurt. as well. Dropped to red HP, will die as well. Tojo flanking from the side of three, getting damage on a Phantom who dropped into five and will eventually fall to the bomb from Manicu. Uh, scouts trying to clean up Indus. Any scrappy fight that can continue to work some chaos into their favor. But with Watch Mustard Hayes, and Hayes, here. he's lurking in lobby. He might get caught out here. Uh, he's gonna op he, he does realize that he's a little far up. He's gonna back up. But yeah. That was such a scrappy fight. It looks like well, Red's Hunter. just in. Yeah, I'm not even gonna wait kill. for the Uber. They're just in, and they're now just, they're almost all dead. This execution with the Red Team pushing out just all, seems to be continuously lopsided. Look at Tresh. Tresh is, is just in. still in, trying to He's work so his way hurt. to collect as many kills as he can. Gonna allow Mustard to get some space as well. The Uber will come out from the side of the Red Team, chase down Mustard. Trace of actually to, surfing to towards to one skills. to create a distraction, trying to get onto the point. Tojo will try to get onto it to block it, but it seems like that is enough chaos for the side of the drug dealers to collect that second round. Yeah, the, it seems that the Platy Pug Esports is very comfortable holding last, but these pushes that'll last are super scuffed. I don't know if it's a timing issue or what's going on, but the, those pushes that'll last, you know, the Jug Dose are punishing them so hard with just the aggression onto the doors. It's very much seems to be a timing thing, making sure you're all fighting at the exact same time. But there's a, if there's one saving grace, it's the mid fights are for sure all at the same time. You know, simple rollout, simple execution. Okay, he's going should in be fast. easy enough. Yeah, I'm gonna get the pack. Hunter gonna drop very low. 
Yep, trying to put up some damage. Blue team once again controlling the high ground. Bomb from Manicu immediately shut down, dropped her range. He will fall, but Hayes also giving this life for that. No soldiers for the side of the red team. Bomb for Paul Dog going into choke actually. Working his way behind him to jump back in to go on the red team. Getting dropped down in sewer. Alec the sole survivor, but not for long as that was a very quick collapse from the side of the jug dealers. Yeah, it looked good at first. I think Mustard, I saw him like go from 100 to like 2, back up to 100 and back to 2 again. He like was eating so many bows and damage, but they just could not get him down. And you know, he can't kill the demo in mid. That's not a good sign for winning mid. And Mustard's already going to put stinky traps in. Oh, he gets Oh two. my. He gets the demo as though not just a normal scout kill. So that's going to be rough. They're actually not even going to build a gun. Galax is going to stay sniper. So a bit rough for their defense, but uh. Good play at the end of the day, working the way through one to be able to collect those two kills, preventing the red team from setting up in the way they need to, but popping through four, immediately going in to collect any kills they can, and us blast it into the spawn. We'll hit reset, but there's no seekers in the point. Getting on the point, times four. Alec trying to run forward and try to prevent them from happening, uh, the ground from happening, but will fall. No one to uh, come and help protect the point after that, so pretty clean around for the side of the Jug Dealers to lead 3-0 into the half. Yeah, that was a pretty dominant showing from uh, from drug dealers, I will say. You know, I think they lost the initial mid and they got held onto their last, and then they kind of rolled it back. But yeah, it's funny, but it's these fights are really scrappy, right? It's just like a few little mistakes here and there that all they need to do is change, like, you know, one person feeding too early or one person doing something, you know, dying. And these fights can be going very differently. And to be honest, I there's a part of me that. Obviously, the team has to play well to be able to, you know, go 3-0 in comparison. But it feels like a lot of the mistakes that we're witnessing were are not necessarily uh, the jug dealers doing anything super fancy. It's more just like Platypose Esports making simple mistakes that they could very easily remedy within their own team. Like the timing thing, like making sure you're all walking through the doors at the same time so it's not accidentally like a chain feed. We saw that a couple of times. It's also, there's uh, a lot of mid-dominance as well, but uh, going into the stats, Mustard actually topping the charts, 380 DPN Gungan leading for his team, but not overall in the server. In terms of kills, Alex still putting out a very hefty number on the board, entering uh, into the 20-plus kill range, but uh, see some, some rough stat lines uh, from the side of the soldiers from the red team there. Uh, on a death timer a little bit sometimes in the match, may acute taking the, the brunt of the damage. 2 and 16 is not necessarily the place you want to be even if you are you know you're kind of participating in the damage department yeah it, it's sometimes that's just how soldier goes but yeah it looks like the only soldier seems to be really having any fun is Hayes having a positive kd and over 300 dpm which is and what you like to see all the rest of the soldiers not having too much too good of a time at least according to the logs.tf but yeah that's looking, to be expected on process i guess yeah that is to be expected it seems like the combo scouts are having fun too you know aimer a little a little bit of a anomaly here on the low dpm but that's just you know it's flying scout it happens not too, not a super big issue like it seems to be mainly that the mustard and gungan are just doing so much work they're doing such massive amounts of damage and not taking that much damage so whatever they're doing seems to be working it makes sense to see a stat line like this because what i barely touched on and didn't go too much into was a good example of the way that teams will play in normal fights is what you can see on the mid especially when it's a mid like process I feel like every mid we've seen has been the blue team just owning the high ground. It's the scouts freely up on the high ground, don't give a care in the world about anything that might approach them. And that's just a testament to their ability to, one, dodge and dish out damage while they're up there to maintain their space, and two, mustard putting enough pressure to help, one, knock other people off the high ground, and two, forced Hunter to shoot at him. Because, you know, sometimes demo MGEs across mid can be forced, and if you ignore them for for scout damage it can really bite you at the end of the day so it, it definitely makes sense seeing these stats based on just what we're seeing in these mid fights yeah i will say it is an absolute tragedy if you've ever played soldier in process mid, you know that if you're a soldier and you see just two scouts standing on top of the crate you're in for a sad time that bit so definitely you know you're gonna have to adjust the things and i think the biggest thing that the plenty poke esports are gonna have to change if they want to get back into this is just a, they gotta win mids, and B, they gotta figure out, you know, just gotta get their pushes in sync. Because, again, it's these fights are really scrappy, so it's not like a huge DM difference or anything. It just seems to be, you know, you know very simple little mistakes that are definitely easily fixable. It reminds me of, a, the, like, an old Global Clan Fire match from earlier this season, watching them play Process, where, like, you'll see a team win a fight, like, pretty convincingly. You're like, all right, they won the fight. And then right after, they accidentally throw it away. Just like little within-team mistakes that need to be addressed to, uh, to keep your advantages going in your favor. So 
had an opportunity to uh, use the halftime to figure out what they wanted to fix, and we're going to see it applied here going into the second half, seeing if the Jug Deals will continue the train rolling and take this into a one game for them, or if Platypuck Esports will flip things around and put themselves on the board. I think I, I think both demos kind of beat the rollouts, which just happens, but they arrived at mid at kind of the same time, so it doesn't matter, but yeah. Looks like Buster is going to, as you said before, I, I noticed he is putting a lot of pressure on this high ground. 50. And this is not even at mid, I means all these people that are in the front aren't going to get healed, but it's actually the Jug Deals that are falling instead. Yeah, they were, they were so hurt. I, I Very heads up play for Randos to play passive there. Whatever his uh, theory was, it seemed to work, because now they just have the pick advantage. And look at this collapse. They're just in. So from Tresh backwards, though, that was a lot of damage that could have been a collective kill, but able to surf out at the end of the day and make sure that it's going to be a hard advantage to pressure if they want to get uh, continue to pushing into two. Looks like they're going to try it. Have to leave one at, uh, on the cap, though, and have a soldier ruling out. So a little bit of some sewer presence, but uh, it's going to be, I don't think they're going to commit too much. It's going to end up being a stalemate for Platypuck Esports to try to break. Yeah, I think I saw Phantom hit like four bows at the end there. I heard a lot of Healy sounds, so I think Phantom uh, really clutched up that bit, make sure no one else dropped there for them. But yeah, looks like uh, they're gonna like to go for the good old IT pressure. Tojo gonna drop pretty low, but again, oh, here comes, it was actually a fake and Manicute's in, but you know, doesn't seem to find anything. They do find trash off of the Sticky Trap and they might just elect to take that through mid we'll to, or through into second, we'll have to see. You know, they got an opening. It's not a spam class, though, so it might be hard to get an entrance without necessarily popping Both first. Both soldiers in cap rough, IT. But... You know, they're going to big bomb onto Hunter. He's going to drop so low, and Indus is actually going to save, and Manicute's just in. Yep, trying to get something going for their team. Will not find too much success. There's some chaos happening around IT, but it seems like they're going to disengage, at least for now. Tojo's still kind of in there, though, trying to apply some spam, getting some damage on a gun, but will fall himself when Hayes arrives to collect that kill. And... Like this before, sometimes you see both these soldiers dead for the side of Platypuck Esports, so this is quite the opening it's gonna for the try dealers to work off of. Go yeah, Gunga just kind of walked through Choke here, and it looks like they, they, they can't defend Choke, they just walk through Choke for free, but it looks like a is going to walk in and win the 1v1 versus Alec. He, he almost wins the other scout he's got, too. He's and both scouts that kill as well. Fall. Yeah, yeah, first both soldiers fall, and then both scouts fall. It's, you know, that's a very good recipe to instantly lose mid, so... Now, now, now they're on the back foot, defending their own second, and still down two. If the bomb happens right now from one of the soldiers, it's going to be rough to deny it. But I think there was a duel that happened inside Sewer that prevented a bomb from happening. Up until now, Hayes in the air, trying to land on anyone. Not quite on top of Indus, but Tojo will die over on the side Fresh is behind, though, in the lobby. Choke, so. Oh, yeah, enough chaos to get him behind. So I think they know they're chasing. Actually, both scouts are going behind, so we'll take the pack, but immediately melt. And I don't think Judge is ready to, to move off of that. So two dead, although it's, it's only a... A net of one for the side of Platypug Esports to work off of. Might be a bomb that's coming in, and it will be from the side of Manicute jumping in. Trying to create some space. Able to get enough damage get Buster, on a Buster. Though. That's a very big pick. Yep, Hunter will die on the uh, transition into the point, though. Paul Dog giving up his life for that Uber exchange coming out. Trying to chase down Tojo to get some damage and will successfully get that kill. So at the end of the day, net positive still for the side of the Jug Dealers trying to potentially work their way. They have an opening, but they have they to have win this fast. It's two Although, scouts. Yeah, yeah, they do have to push that two scouts, so they're going to be able to get in, but the question is can they win the fight? And, uh, I, I, I think the Platy Pugs... Oh, they're... Hunter oh. rolled out to, uh, two straight into Hayes. Yeah, that, that was unfortunate. I was going to say they wisely elected to back up, but Hunter, you know, just kind of get caught, get, getting caught out there in the roll, and it looks like uh, Jugdu is going to take that pressure and just going to parlay that into a second. Alec getting caught out on Sniper by Hayes, you know, Pogoing in, and Hayes is still in there just walking through the doors. Yeah, Manicu tried to bomb in as well and was not able to quite find anything. So big opening for the side of Jokyo to still work with Togo. Tojo bombing in will eventually fall as well. A lot of players dropping low for the side of the blue team, but it will be the red players that are falling and allow Joke Dealers to collect their fourth round, leading us into match point. Yeah, it looks like uh, Platypug Esports are going to need a you know miracle, some big momentum shift here if they want to get back into this match. It's uh, it looks like it's all coming up Jug Dealers for now. Yeah, we've seen comebacks like this before, you know, reverse sweep, but uh, it's not too often the question is, is will this be one of the miracles or will it just be another match put into the books? But I'm going to be able to see at least a sneak peek of what might happen after this first mid. Actually, going to be a soldier duel, almost landing on top of each other over by the Mustard's red crate, but no kill there. Right now. Yep, Tojo creating some space, trying to bomb around, but it's actually the blue soldiers that are committing onto the red team. Paul Dog will fall. A lot of low players on the side of the red team, Manicu, will fall as well. So one, uh, both teams actually down one soldier for the continuation of this mid. Yeah, I'm just, Mustard's kind of just, I'm just watching Mustard. He's just kind of walking in here, but it looks like a Hunter's the one who can be actually collect the kill. It's going to drop so low and actually going to get taken Two out by bow a bow. Kills. Yeah, looks like the men's electing to bow the other team instead of their own teammates. You know, doing all that damage, got to... I, I, think the meds there, I think the meds there got more kills than any of the scouts in the server. 
Maybe. Have to check that. But, uh, Fight's yeah, still going on. Look at this refight, though. They're still in. This is actually such a Chad play from uh, Blue. They're just in on the point. And... Bomb from Chojo. Big bomb. Oh, oh my god. Too. The air shot, but the pop came in from Phantom to make him survive. Wall shot onto Chojo, allowing uh, that crater to happen. So Paul Dog technically collecting that kill. So uh, it, it, good for the drug dealers collecting that kill, but had to expend their Uber from it. Good play from Chojo. He's but in. He's just <laughs> in. Oh, the trap. That was the perfect trap landed right where he wanted it. But Hay is going in, making sure that. That pocket kill is collected and the uber is only on a solo dome man because the scouts are rolling out so it's really not gonna be able to taste anything hayes is actually sticking in a little bit longer to try to get some positioning but have to duck into sewer to collect that pack so even though the uber was expended on mid it seems like this uber force was a uh, pretty good for the side of the jug dealers to make sure that they have something to work off of uh long term yeah i think red expected them to be a little closer and it, I mean, you know they, they kind of popped out and they weren't ready to bomb and it was just like oh they're all there but it uh, looks like we got some it for sure gonna trade a scout for a soldier or no two soldiers excuse me but uh yeah trash is also very aggressive in it here take, gonna actually take a kind of a 2v1 there trash is so far in and so they still like they're just kind of walking through joke and off of trash's distraction they're just in and uh, is that a pause, a pause? oh maybe well, it was it's over now. A... Was it a BM pause? No, it's 90 seconds of the future. Yeah. Maybe it was a read exec pause. I don't know. We're yeah, working no, away. I, th I think working that away was in the lab. Yeah. Technically, add, but it's going to dwindle really quickly and just able to pop his Uber out. But no soldiers once again. Red and team with yeah. no soldiers for this post. Trying to chase down Mustard in through four or five. Will eventually collect that kill. Pipe Look at Tresh, he's in the him, but Tre Tresh is just in. He does not care. Able to collect that kill onto Hunter. So 4v4 for now. Still the scrappy fight. Manicky will fall. There is the bit of distraction coming from Hayes. Trying to bomb the way on it. Indus double soldier on. Almost able to collect the kill. We'll finally do that. But 2v3 scenario for the side of the red team's favor. Oh, he got uh, nice arrow, though. He's on the point. Oh, he has no ammo, though. Okay. I was going to say, if he won that, though, that was going to be extremely distressing. But lo looks like, uh, I'm curious to see what happens here, because I, I, if that's a re-exec pause, you know, it should be over pretty quickly. But it looks like they actually did lose that last fight. Tresh actually going to eat a sticky. And Tojo is actually still in. He does manage to get a little damage before he dies. But uh, looks like, oh, OK, that's three down. I think and Hunter dies, too. This is going to be a tall order for Aim and Indus to take this. This might be a uh, GG's. Yeah, this is going to be a quite the 2v5. Mustard is just in. He knows <laughs> this is going to be rough with the red team getting on at this point after killing the two players. And that is going to be a game 5-2-0 in favor of the Jug Dealers. Yeah, you know, I, I think we were all expecting the Jug Dealers. You know, they were definitely considered the favorites. But a 5-0 is still pretty impressive. You know, you always got to be impressed with a 5-0. You know, it's pretty easy to drop around, especially an invite where the teams are, you know, so easy to pounce on mistakes and... I think the Jug Dealers didn't do anything special, but they definitely played a lot off of the mistakes that uh, Platy Pugs Esports were making. For sure. I mean, it kind of showed that whenever both teams had something good going for them, the Jug Dealers more consistently made sure that that, uh, you know, that advantage was kept. We saw a lot of scrappy fights where a team would go in and would get like a really nice kill that would allow them to continue to work in their victory, but. Uh, it seemed a little bit more, it, it was more consistent for the Jug Dealers to like, maybe they get an Endus kill or something, or a Hunter kill. They're able to keep that train rolling in their favor, able to make sure that that turns into them collecting more points and more rounds. But for the side of Platypuck Esports, I feel like a lot of the times we saw success in their side collecting Phantom or a couple of kills, it was a little more, more rough. There was more salvaging happening for the side of the Jug Dealers to make sure that uh, good plays were thwarted by, you know, counter initiation and things of that nature. But, uh, Overall, GG's 5-0 for the Jug Dudes. Another collected win on their hunt for a playoff spot, trying to collect as many games as possible. And this is one they definitely had to win if they wanted that to happen. Yeah, looking at the stats here, it looks like a, there's a lot of sad soldiers on red team and a lot of very happy soldiers on blue team. You know, the, the blue soldiers definitely seem to be having a much more enjoyable time on process than anyone on the red team, really. Yeah, if you ask a soldier player what their least favorite thing in the game is, it's not unsurprising to hear losing on process. Because <laughs> it, or, or Sunshine probably in that too. But when it's already rough in general, like in an even match for your class on a certain map, and then you're also, your team's not in a good position a whole lot of the time, it's just, it's really rough to, to have a whole lot of impact. So uh, it's unsurprising to see, you know stats with something left to be desired from soldier players if your your team's losing zero to five but it is what it is you move on to the next match and try to fix things up
I think Platypugs is still trying to... They have one win on the board so far, trying to look for more. I think there's other matches versus neighboring teams, like other qualifier-type teams and things of that nature. They still need to play, like, one or two. So it could be interesting to see uh, what they do versus those teams and what they can learn from this match, because still a bit to see from them. I mean, even though we're looking at a playoff race long-term, we're also kind of looking at the race of, you know, the teams trying to not get last, because if you think about it, all 10 teams trying to get into a, or to stay an invite the next season, well, someone's got to move down for the advanced winners, right? So you don't want to be that last place team, otherwise it might automatically be you. Or even if it's a little bit better, you might have to be forced to play qualifiers to stay an invite. So still something to keep in mind and don't want to have your record drop too low as we get to the second half of this season. But uh, I think we're, we're not getting interviews this time around. This is a pretty swift victory, not a whole lot to say. We've also interviewed the dog dealers a decent amount this season already, so I think there's not much more for them to really say until uh, we get into the later half of the season, so that's to be expected. Probably best to move on to the shout-out phase. Space, you got any shout-outs? Uh, as always, shout-out to Skis. Uh, shout-out to Lou and her ducks, if she is still in chat. Uh, shout-out to her, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I guess shout-out to production, you know, shout-out to the teams playing, all that stuff. Yep, definitely a shout-out to Dolphin for, for casting and uh, putting on the production show for us. And shout-out to the viewers for watching, but that's going to be it for us tonight. If you want to catch out, uh, catch more action, you're going to want to check out us next week. I mean, the games aren't really scheduled yet. We have to wait for the teams to schedule it, but it's it's the usual, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, probably. So keep your eyes peeled for, for, uh, for what we're going to be doing next week and probably have more interesting games for you guys to watch. There's also Highlander on Monday, which is, Ooh. that's more stable if, if you're just wanting to watch TF2 in general and not six is specific. So there's that at the very least to keep you, uh, you can, they can keep you in the know, check out what's happening there and might give you an update, a more recent update on uh, what's going to be happening later on in that particular week. It's probably a good strategy. But for tonight, that's going to be it for us. I've been Jarrett casting with Space Ghost with Dolphin on production. Thank you and good night. Good night. <laughs>